Welcome, friends. Welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to tackle key lime pie. And key lime pie is a recipe that I have avoided um, like the plague since the beginning of this channel. And not because it's a difficult recipe, not because it's a recipe that I don't like. I really like key lime pie. Um, but because the major ingredient, this, um, what is now known in the United States as a key lime, although in other parts of the world it's just called a lime, this is when you go to Southeast Asia or India, um, this is the lime that you're going to see everywhere anyway. It's just a lime. We only get them here in Canada once a year, sort of midwinter, end of January, beginning of February. And I've always wanted to do a lot of research on key lime pie because there's this mythology around the pie itself, an origin story worthy of a Marvel villain. The origin story just seemed a little hokey to me. Um, and so two or three years ago, a number of food historians came forward and said, the origin story isn't true. Absolutely not true. Um, so the origin story, the mythology around it is that a woman named Aunt Sally working in the Florida Keys observed a bunch of Cuban sponge farmers um, out on their boats and they would take uh, Eagle Brand condensed milk out on their boats with them and they'd mix it with lime and they'd put it on bread. And it would thicken up and um, they would eat this for lunch mostly because they didn't have refrigeration on their boats. Uh, and some of the origin stories, the timeline didn't fit. In some instances, the origin story happens before uh, the key ingredient actually is invented. Um, so I always found it kind of kind of funny that 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 people were holding on to this idea that that Aunt Sally, who nobody can prove who Aunt Sally was, invented this pie. And so a couple of years ago, when this whole furor started, that the, the the pie didn't originate in Florida; it actually originated in New York City. This is the cookbook that everybody was talking about, New Magic in the Kitchen, um, put out by the Borden Company, who makes sweetened condensed milk or condensed milk. And it is essentially what we would say is a 2020 key lime pie, except it's made with lemon. And so everybody hypothesized that the lime pies that were being made in Florida changed at this point. They changed to this recipe and then thus began the modern key lime pie. Um, and of course, you know, people in Florida got upset. And there's a guy who runs a key lime pie festival and he put out a call asking for people to bring forward other recipes so that he could disprove this because nobody wants their southern pie to be originating in New York City. And so some people came up with a pie from 1939. Um, you can find it in the Friday, August 25th, 1939 edition of the Miami Herald and it is called lime pie. Um, and it is essentially what we would consider today a key lime pie, except it doesn't say to use a graham cracker crust. And one of the interesting things is at the end, it gives a little bit of family history. The person who sent in the recipe gives a bit of family history and says this recipe has been used in the Blackwell family, Key West, for more than half a century, which would put the origin of this recipe at 1889. Um, which is great, but when you go back through um, anything published prior to this, all the way back to you know the dawn of condensed milk, um, you can't really find this pie. Uh, you would expect to see it in newspapers, you would expect to see it in community cookbooks, you would expect to see it a whole bunch of different places. And so this is where the trail ended. And so I started doing a little bit of research and I came up with, um, from 1936, so three years earlier, an article in the Saturday, October 3rd, 1936, Miami Herald. And the person who wrote the article said, I obtained these recipes from people living on the Keys before the disastrous 1935 Labor Day hurricane. The first was used at Carib Colony and the second at Max Place. Both places were destroyed in the storm. So line pie number one is what I've started right here. And it is essentially 1936 the 1930 recipe from the Borden cookbook, except they're using three eggs instead of two. And he does say to use key limes, 
and they do say to use a graham cracker crust pastry shell. So that's the first one I'm going to use. Also on this page is lime pie number two, which is um, more closely related to all of the pies that I could find up to this point. Um, most pies before this were just called lime pie, and they were made the same way as a translucent pie. And a translucent pie is something closer to what we would consider a lemon meringue pie today, where you put the juice with water and sugar and a thickener like cornstarch or flour over a double boiler. You bring it up to temperature, you whisk it, and then it will thicken because of the heat and the thickener, either cornstarch or flour. Instead of using the acid from the lime juice to thicken the condensed milk. So this one is, is really close, but it happens after the 1930 recipe book. So let's get this mixed together. I'm gonna to switch to a whisk. Okay, so we'll whisk this together just until it thickens. Okay, now we're gonna make the meringue. So whip the egg whites until they're stiff peaks. I'm gonna go part way before I start to add the sugar. And none of these recipes, when they call for making meringue, use cream of tartar. Uh, in the end, it's not strictly necessary. It's nice to have. If you've got it, you can put it in, but not really necessary. So I'm just gonna put the sugar in and keep beating till stiff peaks are formed. Now we'll pour the filling into a graham cracker crust pie shell. And this is a nine inch pie shell. A nine inch pie plate seemed to be the standard in the 1930s. So that's what I've gone with. I've got the meringue and we just arrange this on top and uh, make nice peaks with it so that it'll brown nicely. I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake while we move on to the next pie. And now it's time for key lime pie number two. Again, this is from the Miami Herald, Saturday, October 3rd, 1936. And let me read you a little bit more about what the, um, about what the columnist says about this recipe. Such are the enchanting lime pies of the Florida Keys, a con contribution to American cookery worthy of the cordon bleu. That's pretty high praise. To my surprise, only one recipe for lime pie was submitted in our pie contest, and that was from a man and had some defect which disqualified it to my regret. Lime pies may also be made like a lemon or orange pie and be baked in the shell. So what I take from that is that in this time period, um, lime pie was open to much more interpretation than, than today. Um, today, people are very dogmatic about their belief system around what a lime pie or key lime pie should be. Whereas what I found in, in these earlier um, pieces in the newspapers is that it was much more open to interpretation. And in fact, in this time period, I also found you were more likely to have in the pie contest, it's funny, all of the, um, all of the fairs posted who won the pie contests. And so in those pie contests, you were more likely to see an avocado pie or a mincemeat pie um, than you were to see a lime pie or a key lime pie. Um, apparently, pre-1939, 1940, they weren't that popular, um, or at least they didn't show up in many places. So in this recipe, I need to separate three eggs. I'm going to whip the whites into a meringue and I'm going to beat the yolks before I add the other ingredients. Okay, so it calls for a pinch of salt, lime juice, warm water, and half the amount of sugar from the ingredient list. And now this goes over a double boiler and I keep whisking it and cooking it until it thickens. There will be a reaction between the lime juice and the egg and the heat and it should thicken up nicely. Although I'm kind of interested that this one doesn't contain another thickener like cornstarch or flour. Let's see what happens. While the lime and yolk is cooking, I'm going to start whipping up these egg whites. This has taken a lot longer than I expected. We're up to about 20 or 25 minutes. Now the recipe just says um, until thickened and I'm having a tough time deciding what thickened is. I mean, it's a lot thicker than when I started, but I was expecting something 
thicker and I've got to make a decision. Is it long enough? Have I thickened it to the point that the original recipe writer or chef wanted me to thicken it to? I don't know. What do you think? It's been about another 10 minutes and it hasn't changed in thickness. I think this is as thick as it's going to get. Pulling the plug. Um, it's not going to get any thicker, I don't think. So we pull this off. It has thickened. Now the recipe doesn't say whether I should let it cool down or if I go right ahead and put the egg whites in right away. Um, in the absence of further instructions, I'm going to fold in the egg whites starting now while it's still hot. So uh, the way that you would do it normally is you stir in the first bit just to get it all in there and then you fold the next two thirds. This pie excites me a little bit. This is the first time I have made a lime pie using this method. So I'm interested what the texture is going to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know what the flavor is going to be. It's going to be like a lot of other pies from this era with these ingredients. So now that this is all folded in, put this into a pie shell and this gets baked in a 350 degree oven until brown, however long that is. And now pie number three. This is from, again, the Miami Herald, uh, Saturday, April 15th, 1933. This is the earliest recipe that I could find for a lime pie or a key lime pie that uses condensed milk. It's called the Tropical Chiffon Lime Pie, and it's from Mrs. Mabel McClenahan, who lived at 313 William Street, Key West, Florida. Now, you can't get more Florida Keys than Key West. So we're going to give her pie a go. It starts out with one can of condensed milk. So we'll get that condensed milk into the bowl. So if you live in Canada or the United States, do you say condensed milk or sweetened condensed milk? Um, I always just say condensed milk because to me, condensed milk is always sweetened and it's evaporated milk that is unsweetened. And I've noticed because I've spent a lot of time going through the Eagle brand archives um, that they go back and forth. The same product on through time on the label, sometimes they call it condensed milk, sometimes they call it sweetened condensed milk. It's like they couldn't decide themselves. And eventually sweetened condensed milk seems to have stuck. Now I need a quarter cup of evaporated milk. In that goes. Now, just like all the other recipes, three eggs, yolks, whites. Now we put in the lime juice and this uses less lime juice than the other recipes. And just like the others, we whisk this until it's thick. And this pie also gets a meringue topping. So same as the other ones. The problem with making three pies in one day is that Julie and I are going to have to taste test three pies in one day. Three pies is too many pies. Okay. This one is going to have the strangest color. I find that the color of evaporated milk to be kind of dull. Anyway, so in goes the filling. And just like pie number one, we put the meringue on top. And once I get the meringue spread on top, this goes into an oven, the same as the first two pies, and cooks for probably 12 to 15 minutes just to firm up and give some color on the meringue on top. And then all three pies are going to go in the fridge for at least an hour or so um, before we do the tasting. So come on back for the tasting. Okay, time for the tasting. Yay! Now, I'm not saying that these are the earliest lime pies in Florida. There were lime pies before these lime pies, but I'm trying to discover the starting point of the contemporary uh, 2020 key lime pie. So... On that note, on that note, um, the 1918 Miami Herald, Saturday, February 2nd, Society and Entertainment page, fortnightly card party. Mrs. J.J. Bridges and Mrs. Mary Louise Carter were the hostesses of the regular fortnightly card party. The affair was a very delightful one, and the hall was decorated with yellow and purple in honor of the occasion. Prizes consisting of homemade lime pie 
and Guava Jelly were awarded the winners of the play. And then they tell you who was attending. Who was attending. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's... I went back through... That's great. I went back through newspapers in South <clears throat> Florida, or across all of Florida, going back to the earliest newspapers that I could find. And this pie from 1933, this one, is the earliest pie that I could find that had condensed milk. <clears throat> Up until that point, um, none of the pies had condensed milk. They didn't have any dairy in them at all. Okay, I'm guessing this one is that pie. No condensed milk, no dairy. Yeah. Since it, it clearly does not look like the other yeah, two. It, 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 doesn't have, <clears throat> it doesn't have any of those things. And it, I'm, I'm very interested to find out about the texture because it has the, um, the meringue is, is whipped into the filling. Ah, yes. So what we have here is the 1933 Tropical Chiffon Lime Pie from Mabel McClenahan in Key West, Florida. This one is a 1936 key lime pie that is essentially the magic lemon cream pie from the Borden. And this is a key lime pie from Max Place, 1936 in the Florida Keys. Just on a visual, that one looks the most limey. It's this, interesting, this one's starting to, to run a little. It's starting to run a little. And, that one's got kind of a funny color. I think you're judging it too hard. I am judging. Okay, so let's start with the 1933. Okay, the I've got my fork. Tropical chiffon pie. Oh, it too is a little runny. Mm -hmm. This is going to be messy. So it's got a lovely texture. Mm-hmm. The lime doesn't hit you up front. Nope, not at all. It's there, but it doesn't hit you up front the way... Um... The, the lime is muted, and I think the lime is muted behind that flavor of evaporated milk. There's a, there's a flavor that evaporated milk has, mm -hmm. and that one has evaporated milk in it. So this one is just condensed milk. Okay. Mm-hmm. The lime is a little more forward. That's a, yeah, the lime's definitely more forward in that. <coughs> Still great texture. Mm -hmm. Still a lovely pie, very creamy. Yeah. And this one had less lime as well. So that might also be why That's there's why less lime yeah. flavor. There's just less lime in it. And this one from Max. I mean, this, that, I'm expecting big things from this, this one. Are you? Yeah, I am. I feel like I need a tie. I, I'm going to have a little tea in the middle. Oh. I'm going to. Palate cleanse, because I know that people are going to ask. Well, I've now, yeah, the lime's built up. The lime flavor is present in my mouth. Winner, winner. Winner, winner. It's completely different. Yes. But, to me, what are you going to say? First, you go. I don't know if I can hold any excitement that you've got. I've there. got excitement. It's it's. I mean, it's very limey. I like the lime yep. flavor better. Um, the lime. I think I still like the texture of that one better, though. Okay, to me, that has the most pronounced lime flavor. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. not. It's not muted. This this I one. Agree. This one has lime flavor. This one's lime flavor to me is muted. I think because it has less lime, and also because it's. Evaporated milk. There's something about evaporated milk, a flavor that I just can't get over, and I don't like the color. I kind of like the texture of this one, but that one, to me, that one is the pie. Okay. I um, mean, I will eat any, you know, it, it, yes. uh, you serve any of them, I will absolutely eat any one of these pies. I would not complain if you gave me any one of them. So in conclusion, there's no conclusion. I think that a key lime pie that predates Probably the pie that was made with the with the condensed milk is is better. Now, it really is limey though. Just because in all the right ways. Like yeah, it, it really. Yeah, it. I mean, the it, the flavor and the texture is just to me is just amazing. Now, just because I can't find mention of 
<clears throat> lime pies or key lime pies that conform to what we would today consider to be the official, the, the official quintessential key lime pie, which is just lime juice, key lime juice, egg, and condensed milk. Just because I can't find any mention of a pie with condensed milk and lime pre-1933 tropical yeah. chiffon pie, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It, it might be out there, but we need to find... I feel like the research involved with that, it's especially if you don't have all these people to help you, would be like a... You could probably get a master's or PhD credit yes, in it yeah. by the amount of time it would but take with to the, find it. With the power of the internet, with all of you out there, comb through the archives. Look, you know, if you live in Florida, go to the library. Look through community cookbooks. Yeah. Talk or to people. If you're, if your family makes a really great key lime pie and you know how long it's been in your family as a recipe, let us maybe know. you've got the book right there at your house. Yes. Let us know. And if we can find earlier pies that 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 confirm the Aunt Sally story with actual dates that are published, that would be great. I'm all uh -huh. for that. I'm all for that. But given what we know at this point, I'd say Aunt Sally is a myth. And it's a fantastic... It's a great myth. It's a fantastic story that sells pie to tourists. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of things come with great yeah. stories. So, um, let us know in the comments below. And I will put a giant star beside this one because that's my that's my favorite all-time key lime pie ever. Wow, um, that's a that's big a, statement. That is a big statement. That's a big statement. And I think coming up we'll do something that Julie said at dinner time. <laughs> but which one are you going to use? Oh, well, let's use this one. We're okay. going to use that one. We're going to do that pie, that recipe with key limes. Yes. Persian limes. Yes. And lemons just to see how they're different. Thanks for stopping by. See you. <laughs> I was just waving. I know. Thanks for stopping by. See y'all soon. I got so excited. I know. I'm so excited by the pie. <laughs> I know.